Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today we're going to take this electric bicycle and turn it into a solar powered electric bicycle. Now this project is going to be something of an exercise. I'm not really intending to leave this as a solar powered bicycle, but rather I'm preparing for a bigger project because I don't know if you guys heard about my little electric mini truck from China. I, I made another video about that, maybe you saw it. Uh, but that is a project that I'm excited to work on because I'm gonna take a solar panel, put it on the top of that, and turn it into a solar powered electric mini truck. The thing is though, I've never done a solar project on something that big, so I'm gonna start on a vehicle that I have a little more intimate knowledge of, an electric bicycle. I'm gonna turn this into a solar powered bicycle, and then assuming that works, I'm going to take that hardware and just port it over to the truck basically, and hopefully it's a pretty easy setup. So we're gonna start today by turning this bike solar and let's get to it. All right, now let's see what I'm working with. I got a couple panels from Renogy here. They're both 50 watts um, and these should be, you know, like top of the line panels. So I think this is gonna work well. I went with 50 watts basically just because the physical dimensions were about the size of the top of my truck cab. And so uh, I'll be able to put a 50 watt panel up there and just sort of trickle charge it. I got two different ones. One's the uh, flexible panel and one's the rigid panel. Here's the rigid panel. Um, and I just didn't know which one was gonna work better. So I decided to get both and play with them and whichever one I don't use on the truck, I'll just have as a spare. So here's the rigid panel. Specs on the back, 50 watts, 22 volts, 2.9 amps. Um, weighs 7.72 pounds or three and a half kilos. So this looks like it's gonna be a pretty nice option, but I also thought maybe the flexible panel might be good just because it'll have a little bit of give to it. So we'll have to uh, play with it and see. But let's get that one open. And since they're both basically the same power, it doesn't really matter to me. All right, so flexible panel. It's also got these MC4 connectors, um, basically same specs, 50 watts, 22.6 volts, 2.9 amps. Uh, 2.87 pounds, 1.3 kilos. So it should be like half the weight, or less than half the weight. Oh yeah, so the flexible panel is way lighter. So uh, I don't know if that's gonna matter too much for my project. The truck already weighs like 800 pounds, but it's, it's impressive the same power here. The rigid panel weighs like over twice as much. So for these, I think I'll basically be able to set up on this electric XP bike here. This bike has the uh, cargo package on it. So it's got racks and baskets on the front and back and they'll make kind of like a perfect platform for putting these solar panels on here. Now, obviously this is a little bit silly, like it, it can work of course, but A, you're covering up your baskets for utility and B, it's just like a lot of unwieldy panel out here. So this is more of like an exercise to see what's possible, but I think we can still set it up and make sure this thing is a functioning solar powered bike. And then the last piece of this puzzle is I got this MPPT charge controller from ebikes.ca, uh, Grin Technology. And this thing should be able to give me exactly what I need in terms of the output voltage. It's programmable, so I can dial it into the 54.6 volts that I'll need for this 48 volt e-bike. Then I can use the same thing to dial in the voltage to, I think it'll be closer to uh, 74 volts or something for my truck. So this should be like the, the perfect part for this project because it'll work on, on both vehicles. The majority of this project really is designing the wiring. And so I had to rig up the input and output for the charge controller. It didn't have any spare Anderson connectors on hand, so I just lopped off the ones from the charge controller's input and used them to connect to the output, which would feed the battery. That was fine since I knew I'd be using MC4 solar connectors anyways on the input, as I'd be plugging in solar panels there. I had to create a wiring harness that put two sets of MC4 connectors in parallel, since I had those two 50 watt solar panels I was working with, and I wanted them to work together to create essentially like a single 100 watt panel. That basically meant creating a Y to run those two sets of connectors together in parallel. Then I used the spare Anderson connectors that I stole off the input side of the charge controller to wire in a 55 by 21 millimeter connector that would be my output and would feed my battery. Fortunately for this project, the electric XP 2.0 e-bike can operate while the battery is charging, and so this is all going to work fine. But some e-bikes cannot turn on and operate while charging. So if you want to try this on your e-bike, make sure you try to turn on the bike while it's on the charger first to see if it's actually going to work and drive. Now the forward solar panel was in that nice rigid aluminum frame, but the rear panel was flexible, so I created a rigid backing for it from a sheet of particle board, and then a bit of black spray paint later, and you can barely tell it's there. All right, so up to this point, I've gotten the solar panels attached. I just lashed the front one down with some uh, foam between the rack and the panel 
seems pretty rigid. Again, this is all kind of experimental, so it's really just a step before doing this on the truck. On the back, I did the uh, particle board because this flexible panel extended pretty far past the rack. And I just didn't want it flopping around too much. So I sort of uh, rigidified it there and turned it into a rigid panel. Uh, for the wiring harness, I just finished this up and this is gonna help me put these two 50 watt panels in parallel. So I'm gonna have most of the harness up front here. And basically, if you follow along, there's going to be this connected to one panel. On here, this is gonna be connected to the rear panel. And then this runs them into parallel. And then we've got basically one 100 watt panel that I can plug into my charge controller. So the charge controller I've got up here. And as you guys saw, I had to put the MC4 connectors onto the solar panel input here. And then I went back and I just stole the Anderson connectors because I didn't have any on hand. And I used those to add the uh, charge connector, which is a 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter connector. And then the nifty thing is I found that I can actually mount this on the uh, mobile phone holder here. So it's gonna be a nice little mount and give me a nice dashboard right up on the handlebars there. So now it's kind of the moment of the truth. Let's roll this out into the sun and see if it fires up and charges the bike. So wiring this in, we've got our rear solar panel. So we'll connect that in here and then we'll run this up to the front of the bike or we'll connect our front solar panel so now effectively we've got a 100 watt solar panel because we've got those in parallel. The last step will be to wire them to the input of our charge controller. And if we come around and look here, it's a little hard to read in the sun, we're getting 20.5 volts in. So that's perfect. It means our panels are working and I'm not blocking them at all, so that's good. So then the last step, and this is really the moment of truth, is to plug in our charging wire and see if that starts the bike charging. Man, this thing is hard to read in the sun. There we go, all right, so we've got 0 0.8 amps of output at 53.3 volts. So it looks like we're charging at about uh, 45 or so watts. Let's see, what is that? So we're charging at 43 watts. So it's not the fastest charge. We're also sort of partially blocking our panel here with the handlebars. Let me see if moving those out of the way a little bit gives us anything better. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we're up to 1.12 amps. So it's amazing how if you just block a little bit of one cell on a solar panel, it really cuts a huge amount of the power. The issue is there is that all of these cells are wired in series. So even though you're only covering, let's say like 10% of the panel, if you're covering half of one of the cells, you're effectively covering half of the entire series. So you're really cutting your, your power if you cover even a little bit of the panel. All right, so now we've got all the wiring nice and buttoned up. Let's take this thing for a test ride as a uh, solar powered e-bike. What do you say? And it's, it's amazing how much a cloud makes a difference. So right now a cloud has gone over the sun and we've dropped from 1.1 amps to 0.1 amps. So it's really cut almost like 90% of the solar power here. We're down to around uh, let's see, 50, about like seven or eight watts. So it's just like killing our, our power having this cloud right here. But I imagine another second, we're gonna get uh, some more sun. Now, obviously this is a bit silly. Like most people aren't gonna ride around with solar panels this big on their bike. Kind of looks like I'm going around with pizza boxes, but it does effectively work. I mean, you could do this and people that do long range rides, you know, or like touring could actually do this. And these panels aren't gonna create like a huge wind load. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit reasonable. Uh, now, all right, so the sun is really out now. Let's see what we're at. Uh, we bumped up to 1.49, 1.5 amps. All right, so we're doing closer to like 75, maybe almost 80 watts now out of 250 watt panels. So that's pretty good doing like 80% of uh, the factory rating on these. So, I mean, it, it stands to reason that the power of the sun really makes a big difference. When you get shade, it kills the efficiency of these panels, but in like bright Florida sun here in the middle of the day in August, we're getting awesome performance out of these. So let's do a little more riding and then it's time to start thinking about how I'm gonna put this on the truck.
thanks for watching that video, everyone. I hope you found that interesting. If you're planning to do your own solar powered project, here I was able to take these two 50 watt Renogy panels, outfit them on the bike, and get almost 80 watts of charging into this thing. Not quite as much as the um, you know stock charger, which is probably around 100 watts, and certainly less than I'm using when I ride this bike. You know, the bike's probably pulling on average somewhere around. 350 to 500 watts and closer to 750 when I'm really hammering on that throttle. So obviously 80 watts of charging is not gonna give this thing infinite range. I'm using way more power from the motor than I'm actually generating from these panels, but it's kind of a fun exercise to see what you can do. And if I were to park this outside all day, 80 watts, you know, in maybe seven, eight hours, I could get a full 500 watt hour charge on this battery. So with the setup I have, I could theoretically charge this bike every day from the sun. Not bad. All right, again, thanks for watching everyone. Uh, last but not least, before I go, it is time to announce the winner of the giveaway from my last video. And the randomly selected commenter is... Woodskins Wood. So congratulations. Just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my newest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. Anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. For anyone who doesn't want to wait that long to hopefully win one of my books, you can always find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time, and hopefully next time we'll be putting one of these panels on my little truck. All right, see you guys.